Good morning, everybody. Praise God. <laughs> We're here. <laughs> Welcome. Good morning, and God bless you today. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Loud and musical. Many jeans on the line this morning. You love it? God bless you. everybody doing this great Monday morning? We're so happy to see you. Praise God. We're alive in the land of the living again. <laughs> Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Thank you, Periscope family, for joining us this morning. It's Praise Monday. God. It's Monday, y'all. It is Monday. Woo! Praise mm. God. So, man of God. Sometimes we got to <laughs> command our morning. Sometimes we got to speak to our own soul, you know. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Hallelujah. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Hallelujah. Sometimes we speak to our own soul and say, bless the Lord. Say, you are righteous Amen. altogether. Hallelujah. Amen. Because of the blood of Jesus, oh, you yes. are a child of God. He has yes. given you, oh, strength to become the sons of God. Amen. Even Amen. to all those that believe in his name. Sometimes you've yes. got to remember who you are. Hallelujah. you got to declare and decree the glories of God. Hallelujah. His glory is going to cover the earth as the water covers the sea. His anointing is going to be on you. Praise Hallelujah. God. Oh, we have confidence. You know, there's even a place that says, let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor say I am rich for all that he's done for me. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> we bless the Lord this morning. Amen. We serve a great and mighty yes, God. Yes, we do. Is your God too small? Well, you need to find out about the power of Jehovah, the power of Jesus, the Amen. anointing of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Your God may be 
something that you've grown up with, but is your God the God of the Bible? Amen. Hallelujah. Sometimes people preach this much of the Bible and say, I know God. <laughs> well, that's great that you know that much, but find out just how big God is, who created the heavens and the earth, who spoke to the worlds and they were created, who spoke life to us when we were saved. Hallelujah. And it's made a huge, huge difference. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Let the glory of God, yes, God fill your yeah, hearts yeah. today. Amen. Absolutely. So we're going to be talking about the glory of the Lord, the appearance of the glory of Lord of the Lord by the river Chebar, uh, as Ezekiel uh, was uh, just chilling at the river, and the heavens opened up to him, and he had a vision of God. Praise God. And so, as we have been in our seer anointing, the season of the seer, looking at all the different ways you know, that God has operated through that seer anointing prophetically in the scriptures. We're going to take a look at the prophet and priest Ezekiel today. And his name actually means strengthened by God. And that's exactly Praise what uh, his, his story um, uh, brings out, the strength of God. And so we're talking about the strength that God has sent for a new anointing, for a new season. We are in the season of the seer. The seer anointing is arising. It's a new anointing for a new generation. The seer anointing, praise God, and the seers have been called forth. There's a calling, and a clarion call that has gone forth for seers, and the call has gone forth to some people didn't even know they were a seer. They know they're a seer now. For those who knew they were a seer and were hiding in the closet, God is calling them out. And for those who are already operating in that anointing, right, God is strengthening them for this new day. A new paradigm has been set in the kingdom of God. A new door has been opened in the anointing and grace of God in his seers. Now, this isn't, isn't the only anointing and grace, uh, that fresh grace that God has brought, but we're, we're looking at this seer grace, this seer mantle this seer anointing, and we want to look at it in every way that we can. We want to exhaust it, you know, as far as the scriptures. We could probably never exhaust all of it, but we want to be thorough as we can to what God has given us and the knowledge that, that he's given us to share uh, with you. This, this anointing is so powerful. It is so great. It is the glory of God himself operating through you and in you to give you his sight. Oh, hallelujah. God is all-knowing, all-seeing, and everywhere present. And now with the eyes of God, with the very eyes of God, hallelujah, he's opening our eyes so that we can see him in all his majesty and all his glory and go forth and do that which he's called us to do with the sight, with the anointing, and with the grace that he's given us. So we are excited, you know, as God is bringing up uh, this this multitude of prophetic seers in the land for this next wave and this next call of anointing and grace that God uh, has uh, has uh, ushered in the earth and we're so uh, blessed and humbled to be a part of that call. So, man of God, I'm going to ask you to go ahead and pray for us today as we go forth in this anointing. I feel the presence of God already, you know, and He wants you to know some things about the anointing and grace you know, that's in the book of um, Ezekiel as a seer. Praise God. Where the authority that you have is coming from, where the power is coming from, the source of this mantle, the source of this grace. Hallelujah. And Tiffany says she's always seeing heavenly visions of vehicles with headlights on. <laughs> Not sure what that means, but we're going to explore all of that today. And we're going to hope and uh, believe that God is going to give you an answer. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. In the name of Jesus, I, I, you know, God just downloaded something in me concerning that. But we'll, we can talk about that later. But go ahead, man of God, and pray regarding this awesome, awesome anointing that God has brought forth. Hallelujah in the seer. <laughs> praise God. Somebody say, says, what does hallelujah mean? Hallelujah. And that's just praise to God. Mm -hmm. The word Yah, you know, think of Yahweh. And, well, Yah is the word for, for God. Uh -huh. Right. And Hale means praise. Yeah, there we go. So, <laughs> Hallowed be thy name. You're praising God, giving glory and honor uh, to the God, the creator of the earth. Not just any God. When you say hallelujah, <laughs> you are praising the God of the whole earth, the creator God, the God of the Bible. That's who, when we say hallelujah, we're giving him uh, the ultimate praise, you know. 
uh, and it's a sacrifice as well, the sacrifice of praise, because he loves uh, to be praised. Hallelujah. Thank you. So Praise God. Mm -hmm. And this is a part of the prophets' teaching group. Mm -hmm. So this, we've been speaking to all about prophets. We've been speaking about uh, the ones that are called to serve Jesus, the ones that are ca called to serve God. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And we've got all these different uh, streams on here. Yes. We've got, uh, which ones there? Periscope and uh -huh. Live Me. Live Star. And Live Stream. Live Stream. Praise God. <laughs> and of course, our Facebook family through the Prophets Teaching Group. So, bless and the now Lord. We're, and before they were called prophets, they were actually called seers. Uh -huh. And that's because God would show them uh, dreams and visions and speak to his people in a supernatural especially kings, way. Especially kings. They were in the cabinet or the advisors to kings. So it was a very specialized, high call. A uh, very um, uh, a responsible call that God had give the, given these men to be advisors to the kings. Praise God. Amen. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit. We pray that you would bless this time together. Give us clarity of thought. Give us an ability to communicate your mind. Hallelujah. In mm -hmm. Jesus' name. We Praise bless God. the prophet, and we, oh, that your anointing would Thank be you, on Jesus. her, that your strength Praise would be her. Jesus. Oh, God, mm -hmm. touch her, oh, deliver Lord. her, free her. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. May she flow with the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. in all that you want to say and do today. Mm -hmm. May the joy of the Lord establish her and strengthen her. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. We just touch her right now and speak freedom in Jesus' name. And for you, those who are afar off, we pray that you would come near Thank to the Jesus. Lord Jesus Christ. You, Jesus. To those that you are learning about you, this prophetic gift, this seer anointing, you, we pray that you would be touched, encouraged, hallelujah, and you, sharpened. To those of you, maybe you have been Jesus. dreamers all your life, but you haven't become born again, we pray that you would understand that there are gifts Thank to be used by the glory of God, and that you, there is no other name given among men whereby we can be saved with the name of Jesus, hallelujah, Yeshua HaMashiach. And we just bless you, O oh Lord. We thank you for this time together. Oh, in Jesus' name, for every demonic influence that would come and disturb these airwaves, disturb this uh, streaming, we just bind you up in Jesus' name and say, get out, the Lord rebuke you. Oh, cease and desist your operations. For the Lord our God is mighty, and he's able to save. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. There is no other name among, among you, men whereby we can be saved. Thank you, Lord. There is no power greater than the Lord our God. Thank you, Hallelujah. Jesus. We thank you, O oh God. Thank you are you, worthy Jesus. to be praised. Have thy way. Establish thy kingdom here on earth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As it is in heaven, full of love and peace, power, strength. Hallelujah. We love you, O oh God. You are our king. We bless thank your you, holy Jesus. name. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, praise God. And so God is not going to tolerate any hecklers today. Praise God. And, and what I'm going to do right now in the name of Jesus is right now, this is God's time. This is a time that we have set aside for him. And we're just not going to tolerate anything that goes against our, our God. If you don't like our God, then get off the stream, okay? But here is what I want to say to you. Right now, in the name of Jesus, for every demonic force that's using people against the glory of God, not even against Jonathan and I, but against his glory and against his Holy Spirit. The scripture says, Jesus said, look, you can come against me and you can talk about me, but you can't talk about, you know, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. You can't blaspheme the Holy Spirit. So I'm going to, you know, just give you a prophetic warning right now. I'm going to reverse every curse uh, that has been assigned against us, but not even so much us as it is what God is doing right here, right now. I'm reversing every curse and sending the curse back from whence it's come in Jesus' name. And I rebuke every demonic force right now in the name of Jesus. You're not going to stand, you know, against the power of God and against the glory of the one and true God. And so as we take authority over our equipment, as we take authority over this, this time, this is the time that God has given us. Praise God. And we love our God. We serve our God and we worship our God. Hallelujah. And in, in these United States that we live in, that is the freedom that we have. Praise God. And so we exercise the freedom that Christ has given us for whom the Lord has set free is free indeed. And so as Paul did not tolerate 
uh, the soothsaying girl, or was that Peter? And as Paul did not t uh, tolerate Elymas, the sorcerer who was trying to hinder and oppose the work of God, hallelujah, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. The Lord rebuke you, Satan, right now in the name of Jesus. And I command you to be loosed right now, to be set free. Hallelujah. Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. Let your word go forth today, Father, in peace and in joy and in love as we are here representing the very love of Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Good morning, Prophetess Denny. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Just let the glory of the Lord flow. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. So, man of God, we know that there's a calling that has come forth, a special calling that has come forth for us to come up here. Okay, as he called John to come up here. God is calling you, seer, prophet, come up here. Hallelujah. Come up here, he's saying. Come up to where I am. Come up to this new grace. I got something to show you. I got something to tell you. And I got something to give you. Praise God. Something brand new is holy. We serve a holy God. And what God has for us is, his, is holy and it is divine. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. So come on up here. And we want you to know that as we discuss Ezekiel today, that God is letting loose an impartation. He's sending forth an impartation coming from the very throne of God. He's very pleased with us partaking uh, of this truth in Ezekiel. Ezekiel is one of those kind of books that, that people have tried to figure out since it's been written, you know, and, and we don't have all the glory. That's right, uh, man of God. We break every band of wickedness. Oh, hallelujah. Coming against this work. Thank you, Apostle Knox. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you so much. In the name of Jesus, as you guys stand with us, you know that we are streaming, not just on a Christian stream, not just with our Christian friends, but we are streaming all over the world on Periscope and on live stream. A live star and live me so everybody can see it and that's what we want we want everyone to be able to partake of what God is doing and so this is God's plan and it's his will that's right watchman Tiffany <laughs> glory to God amen let the word have a free course this morning oh I'm feeling a fire already I hope you guys are feeling it too the fire is presence the present the fire of the Holy Ghost oh hallelujah mm. hallelujah well, Ezekiel's vision, praise God. And before we go into Ezekiel's vision, we're just going to talk a little bit, give you just a little bit of an overview of the book of Ezekiel, although we're going to be spending most of our time in chapter one today. There's a glorious teaching, glorious anointing, glorious impartation that God wants to send forth uh, through this word today. Hallelujah. And Ezekiel, of course, his, name's, his name means, Ezekiel means strengthened by God. Okay. He was 27 years in ministry. He was a prophet and a priest. Not only was he a prophet and a priest, hallelujah, he was a seer. So we have four major visions that God gave him, you know, in his lifetime. Praise God. Among other things that God, how God used him. But he used him in visions. Praise God. He used him in signs. He used him in symbols, prophecy, and in parables. And this was uh, over the span of the 27 years of ministry to the exiles uh, and uh, the exiles of Judah who were exiled under uh, King Nebuchadnezzar in Babylon. And so God, he was in the second wave of exiles. Daniel was in the first wave. And of course, you know, Daniel worked very high up, you know, in the king's court, in the king's cabinet. Well, Ezekiel was in the second wave of exiles. Uh, that went, was it? yeah, mm -hmm, second wave of exiles into Babylon. He was exiled in Babylon, and his ministry was to preach to the exiles there in Babylon. Praise God. So remember when he got his first vision, he, he wondered, you know, why are you sending a vision? Why is your glory? Why are you over here in Babylon when the Ark of the Covenant is over in Jerusalem, you know, where you're supposed to be over the Ark of the Covenant? So today we're going to be talking about the Kavad glory of God that was released in that call, that mighty call and anointing uh, that he received, okay? Uh, well, a lot of reasons why he was called. He was called to warn people. He was a prophetic uh, voice of warning. He was a watchman. Tiffany, you'll enjoy this as God has called you a watchman. Ezekiel uh, was clearly uh, called as a watchman uh, in, in this book, and he had several visions, 
The first vision, of course, was the, the glory of God, the likeness of the glory of God and the four living creatures, the cherubim, mm -hmm. which we are going to be talking about that vision today. Uh, he's had a vision of the temple. Praise God. Of course, you know, the very famous vision that he had that everybody preaches, the valley of the dry bones. Uh, praise God. And so the book of Ezekiel is, is, is separated into several sections, okay? Um, and so we have the first section. Uh, where, uh, let's see, well, let's put it this way. Chapters 12 through 24 is the judgment is of Israel. Praise God. He even rebukes false prophets. Uh, chapters 25 to 32, the judgment of the nations. And then 33 and on, it talks about the redemption of Israel and bringing I Israel back. Oh, hallelujah. The hope for all creation. And so... Praise God. So let's go into Ezekiel a little bit. I just gave you just a bit of an overview of this man, this great man of God. But his book uh, begins with an astounding, amazing, magnificent vision that God gave him. And remember, we are seers. We're talking about God speaking to us in visions. And we as prophetic seers, we are to take those visions that God gives us and, and, and translate them into a prophetic message, okay, where other people can understand it. So we are very visual. God shows us stuff like Tiffany just said God was showing her heavenly places with cars with headlights on. Okay, sounds like it's crazy, but it really isn't crazy. It does have a meaning. It does have a meaning. Praise God. Hallelujah. And so all the visions that God gives has a, have a meaning. And so we're going to take a look at this anointing that he received as he received his call. Now remember, <laughs> most of you have already been called into ministry. You know that you're called. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Ezekiel was from a priestly family. His father was a priest, okay? And he was uh, usually when they became ordained into priesthood is when they were 30 years old. Well, he was in captivity, had been in captivity in Judah in exile for five years, okay, under Nebuchadnezzar. And, of course, he wasn't going to be ordained as a priest. Well, in that 30th year, when he would have ordinarily have been ordained as a priest, this is when the heavens opened up to him. He had an open heaven experience. <laughs> oh, an open yeah. heaven, hallelujah, experience where God opened the heavens and showed him himself. Oh, hallelujah. How many other people in the scriptures have you, have you, do you know that had an open heaven experience? We have, we have Isaiah. He is high. He saw God. He's high and lifted up. Praise God, Jacob saw God at the top of the ladder in the vision of the ladder that he had. Uh, Isaiah, of course, the vision, you know, of the throne of God. Praise God. And then John in the Revelation, you know, had a, a, a vision of the glory of God or of God himself as well. And so we know uh, that these are scriptural uh, visions, scriptural um, um, things that happen to the visionaries of God, the visions, scriptural visions. If you have visions, it is scriptural to have visions, to have God's visions, okay? Praise God. Well, I think it's exciting. I don't want to get ahead too much here, but, you know, the uh, Israelites had had the Ark of the Covenant, and mm -hmm. that was the presence of God. Hallelujah. And then they built the temple uh, in the time of Solomon, and there was the, the presence of God so much and the and god came in a shekinah glory mm -hmm. is a very visible glory and then in chapter 33 we read how uh, the uh the temple was completely destroyed mm -hmm. you know but what are we going to do when the temple is destroyed what are we going to do when there's no sign of god here or there and yet here's a man who had visions of God near the river in captivity. Hallelujah. <laughs> Heaven's opened up. Hallelujah. Oh, brother and sister, if you belong to Jesus, you expect visions wherever you are. Praise God. In good times and bad times, in difficulties and in joyful times. Hallelujah. The presence of God, especially now that we have the Holy Spirit, is with us. Hallelujah. Oh, we don't have to travel 100 miles uh, by foot to get to the temple. Hallelujah. Mm. 
the time is coming, Jesus said, where you won't worship over here, over there, but you will worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And you will know his grace. He talks about a heart of flesh instead of a heart of stone. Amen. He's talking about the glory of God wherever you are. Isn't that exciting? Hallelujah. We, you can begin to see things there on the on the riverbank. And they, one pat, one uh, and, uh, commentator said that was basically uh, a place where they had all the pr Israeli prisoners mm -hmm. you know they were so, all living by the river there yep they were stuck by the river how to do you so here they are stuck here they are in a hard place mm -hmm. and yet God can reach that prophet how to do you amen praise the Lord and Apostle Henry brings up the watchman anointing and if we can get to it today we are going to talk about the watchman anointing Ezekiel chapter 2 verse 9 through 10 and um uh three through one and four uh and chapter three verse 26 and how he was struck down so ezekiel is the ultimate watchman of god praise god he had a very unique ministry it was so different uh in in the way that god operated through him and and what you need to understand it as we look at ezekiel and look at the ways that god manifested his glory through him it was very unique very different Okay, very odd, okay, uh, where he was even called to, to act out parables, uh, to play charades. I mean, it was like a game of charades if you've ever played charades. Or, I guess Pictionary is the new way that you, the new game for the new generation where you can't say anything and you got to act out the prophecy of God. It's, it was, it's just amazing all the different ways that God used him. But in Ezekiel chapter 1, I'm going to be reading from the Amplified Bible this morning. I am a King James purpose person. But uh, what we want to do is take a look at what uh, God is saying in all the different translations. And so um, the apostle is going to come back and he's going to be our King James coordinator today. Okay. Now, the vision of the four living creatures. Now, these are the visions of cherubim. And I'm starting in Ezekiel chapter 1. It, th this is an actual vision, an actual time when God appeared uh, to Ezekiel and he opened the heavens. And we hear about the open heavens or the, as the heavens opened uh, for John the Baptist when he was baptizing Jesus and the Holy Spirit descended upon Jesus like a dove. Praise God. Hallelujah. Uh, Isaiah uh, talks about an open heaven. Hallelujah. Praise God. And so we are in a place now where God is opening the heavens even more so, coming himself. Praise God. Coming, stepping down himself. And as you're going to see this in Ezekiel's vision, hallelujah, uh, very real uh, vision that he saw of God on his throne. And so many of us are going to be experiencing uh, this kind of kavat anointing, K-A-V-O-D, very heavy anointing of the grace and the glory of God, the same kind of an anointing that overshadowed the Ark of the Covenant, you know, in the temple. Praise God. This is God himself appearing uh, to uh, Ezekiel. Now it came to about now, it came about when I was in my 13th year of life, or 30th year of life, on the fifth day of the fourth month, while I was among the exiles, among, beside the river Chebar in Babylonia. The heavens were opened, the heavens were opened, and I saw visions of God. Oh, hallelujah. Whenever you see a vision of God, it's because God has opened up the heavens unto you so that you can see Him and His nature. Praise God. Remember, we talked about dreams where dreams are, you know, giving you a personal message about you most of the time. OK, something going on about you that God wants you to know. But when God gives visions, OK, praise God, he's revealing his nature. He's revealing himself to you in the vision. This is this is an, an open eye vision. Uh, we don't think he was asleep by the river because he saw the heavens open, but we, we believe that it, when we call it a vision, that it was actually a day vision. He was awake. His eyes were open. Hallelujah. And he could see uh, this panorama anointing, panoramic anointing that unfold before him. Miraculous, powerful, uh, absolutely astounding anointing and grace that he saw uh, and that he saw it, he, he, he um, experienced it, but he experienced it because God opened his eyes to see it. Now the heavens were open, he said. The heavens opened up. Can you imagine the heavens opening up before you? Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. The, the sky split. The cows split. And watch what happens when, you know, the, the skies split up for him. Praise God. 
and the, the word of the Lord, as the heavens opened, okay, he saw visions of God, visions of God. Hallelujah. He saw visions of God. How many of us can say that, that we've seen visions of God? And if we saw visions of God, would we know what we were seeing? And this is what God wants to do. He wants to put some validity, clarity on those visions that you, you're having to make sure that you know that the visions that you are having, the ones that he's assigned you to have, are of him and of his nature, of his glory. Praise God. On the fifth of the month, which was the fifth year of King Jehoiakim's captivity, the word of the Lord came expressly to Ezekiel the priest, the son of Buzai, in the land of the Chaldeans by the river Chebar, and the hand of the Lord came upon him there. You hear what I'm saying? When the heavens open up to you and God has given you a vision, you know, of his glory, hallelujah, it is his hand, the hand of God that comes upon you to send you forth into the anointing and grace that he's given you, to create in you a grace and an anointing. He puts himself in you, in the place where you are. Praise God. And we talked about his creative nature, that when you have, you know, the visions, when he comes, praise God, especially in a trance, when that trance is over, he has created himself in you afresh and anew. And you can't help but be who he created you to be in that time. So he's placing his glory, his anointing, and his power. And in this particular vision, a significant a ministry anointing he received with this glory vision that he saw. The visions are for purpose. The visions are for a reason. God does not come and bring you a vision that's void and lack and has no purpose. Not only did the heavens open up to him, it was the hand of the Lord that came upon him. And when we talk about the hand of the Lord, we talk about the power of God. We talk about the glory of God. Hallelujah. We talk about the creative grace of God when we talk about his hand being in the midst of where we are. How many of us don't want the hand of God wherever we are in whatever we're doing in ministry and work for him? When you can say that the hand of the Lord showed up, we know, <laughs> we know that we know that, that we know that the power, the very power of God has been released in this situation and in that place and in that time. And in this particular case, the power and anointing of God released when the heavens opened up and God placed himself in that uh, scenario with Ezekiel. God put himself right there where Ezekiel was so that he could see him, so that he could hear him, and so that he could experience who God really is. Now in verse 4, I'm going to start off in verse 4 again. As I looked, he said, I saw a stormy wind coming out of the north. That's a hurricane. <laughs> he, saw, he saw a stormy wind. Okay, remember when the Holy Ghost came and uh, we just celebrated Pentecost Sunday, and when the Holy Ghost came, how did the Holy Ghost come? It came like a mighty rushing wind there in Acts, you know, with the believers who were in the upper room waiting on the promise of God. And it came as a mighty rushing wind, and here we see a stormy wind again, as God is expressing himself, as God is showing up himself, as the heavens have been opened up and the hand of God is present, then we have the stormy wind again, like a hurricane. Coming out of the north, he says, a great cloud. Now in this cloud, hallelujah, uh, is fire, fire flashing, lightning flashing, praise God, continually, lightning coming forth continually out of the cloud. Heavens opened up, hand of God is there. You're having this heavenly vision. You see a storm like a hurricane, a great storm coming from the north. And everywhere in the storm is lightning crackling. And, and can just get a vision of that, get a picture of that happening right now in your mind's eye, that this is the, a picture of, a vision of the God himself, the glory of God. Hallelujah. And so, and it was bright, and brightness was all around it. Like how many, the light 
of the brightness of God, okay, the light. We know that Jesus is light, that God is light, and he is truth, not darkness. There's no darkness in him. And so in this vision, he sees the light of God uh, as well. With the fire flashing continually for, uh, uh, from it, and the brightness was around it, and in the core of it now, in the core, in the core, now you got this, the heavens opening up, a great storm coming, a storm wind like a hurricane, a great cloud and flashing thunder, lightning coming out of it constantly and in the core of it. Now we're looking at the core, hallelujah, and it was something glowing out of the core of it, in the middle of it, hallelujah, something glowing like amber coated metal in the midst of the fire. Here we go. It's fire too. <laughs> Golly, he's got the heavens open. He's got a storm cloud coming like a hurricane. He's got lightning coming all out of it and fire as well. Here we go with the fire anointing of God, the lightning power of his storm. Hallelujah, the whirlwind of God. Hallelujah, praise God. All of that is happening all at one time. And my man, Ezekiel, my priest, Ezekiel, is laying by the river like, wow, what is this? <laughs> oh, my. Hallelujah. Can you imagine? Look and try to see in your mind's eye what Ezekiel saw that day. The heavens splitting, the clouds splitting. Hallelujah. Storm winds, thundering lightning. How many of you, you know, people in the south, they have that ground lightning. You know, and people are afraid of lightning, you know, and rightly so in some cases because, you know, that lightning touch you, you know, that's it. That's all she wrote. My father was struck by lightning even before I was born and it was ground lightning. He was struck by lightning and he died. He actually died from the lightning. He, his friend, the mule cart they were on, where the mule cart was blown to bits, the tree where the lightning struck was like burnt to a crisp. And here my mother is pregnant with my oldest sister coming to his funeral. Oh, hallelujah, coming to his funeral. And people were running out of the house, out of his father's farmhouse. His body was laid out in the parlor. And my mother had to go in to see what was going on. Her husband, her dead husband was in there. And when she got in there, my father was sitting up in the casket. Okay, just to tell you that story as we talk about lightning. So I had experience in my life. My father was actually struck by lightning because I was in his bowels. The Lord sent him back. He was raised from the dead, okay? Praise God. And, and back in those days, they didn't, they didn't embalm. And so I guess that was a great, you know, but he was dead, okay? He was actually dead and came back, so, but struck by lightning. So lightning is no joke. And he's sitting by the river seeing all this stuff happening. Why isn't he running? Okay, it doesn't say that he was afraid or anything. You know, what, what's going on? You see something like that, it's like, you know, that would take me back a little bit. How about you? Praise God. Can you imagine that vision? And as he looked, he saw a stormy wind coming out of the north, a great cloud with fire flashing continually. The fire was flashing continually from it. Okay? And the brightness around it and its core was something like glowing amber metal in the midst of the fire. Within it, there were figures, okay, resembling four living beings. And this was their appearance. They had a human form. Each had four faces and four wings. Their legs were straight and the soles of their feet were like a calf's hoof and they sparkled and gleamed like shiny bronze and under their wings and on their four sides they had human hands as for the faces and the wings of the four of them their wings touched one another their faces didn't turn when they moved each went straight forward regarding the form and the appearance of their faces they each had a face of a man and each had a face of a lion on the right side and the face of an ox on the left and all four had the face of an eagle at the back of their heads. Such were their faces and their wings were stretched out upward. Two wings of each one were touching another. The wings of the beings on either side of it and the remaining two wings of each being were covered, covered their bodies and each went straight forward whenever the spirit was about to go. They would go without turning as they went. And among the living beings, there was something that looked like burning coals of fire, like torches moving back and forth among the living beings. And the fire was bright, and the lightning was flashing from the fire, and the living beings moved rapidly back and forth like flashes of lightning. Come on, y'all. <laughs> you see a vision like that? Wow. 
Praise God. Hallelujah. Mm. Just receive this impartation. We don't always understand all of what God does and why he does it. But he's, but what we understand, though, is that the, the faces that were on this living creature was representative, symbolic. First of all, the face of a man, symbolic of intelligence. The face of the ox, symbolic of the strength of God, the intelligence of God with man. You know, and so uh, each one of the creature's faces, each face represented a different anointing, a different grace of the power of God. Hallelujah or the power of God in this earth, so that men can understand it. Now, back then, probably the most powerful thing that they knew about was the power of an ox. You know, the grace back then, uh, the strength of the, the wings, you know, of an eagle, probably very awe. They were probably in awe of the, the flying capabilities of, of eagles. And so when God shows you a vision, even though it's a vision of his glory, it had to do very personal with him understanding because of the time that he was in what God was depicting here, okay? The, the, the strength of, of the ox animal, the intelligence of man, the, the ability of the uh, eagle, the strength and, and ability of the eagle to be able to fly, uh, the wings, praise God, hallelujah. And in the lion, the, the uh, lion, of course, is the top of the, the, the food chain, the king of the... Uh, kingship uh, of the, uh, let's say, the jungle. The lion is the king of the jungle. Praise God. And that, that authority and, and anointing and grace of leadership and kingship and power and authority that's in the lion. Hallelujah. So he saw all of this and is representative of the power, the great power that they had on earth at that time. Praise God. And so let me go on and read this. And among the living creatures, um, on verse 13, there was something that looked like burning coals of fire, like torches moving back and forth among the living beings. And the fire was bright. And here we go with the fire anointing of God, the fire of his presence. The lightning was flashing from the fire, and the living beings moved, rapid, moved rapidly back and forth like flashes of lightning. That's how fast they move. Now, as I was looking at the living beings, I saw one wheel. On the ground, beside the living beings, for each of the four of them, regarding the appearance of the wheels and their construction, they gleam like chrysolite, like beryl, and the four were made alike. Their appearance and construction were a wheel set at a right angle within a wheel. Whenever they moved, they went in, in any of their four directions without turning as they moved. Regarding their rims, they were so high that they were awesome and dreadful, and the rims of all four of them were full of the eyes all around whenever the living beings moved. We're talking about the fire anointing, the electricity of God. <laughs> we're talking about, praise God, the power of God manifesting uh, in earth, on earth, and through uh, this vision that he's given Ezekiel. Very important, you know, as we understand it, as he goes on, you know, this is a vision of the glory, of the appearance, of the likeness, of the glory of God. Oh, hallelujah, praise God. And so every one of these things that he's seeing, everyone, everything in the vision that he's seeing is extremely important as we understand how God is going to pronounce himself in the earth with fire, with London, with lightning, you know, with fire, with lightning. Oh, hallelujah. The fire glory of God, the light. He saw light all around. Praise God. The, the, the living creatures were there. Hallelujah. Promoting whatever, moving in whatever direction the spirit took them. And in the wheels, the wheels now, the wheel within a wheel on a right angle, they had eyes all over them. Now, what do you think the eyes mean? And I want to tell you, Praise God that the eyes represent the seeing eyes of God, that God sees all and he knows all. And those eyes represent God seeing, but also giving you as a seer, opening your eyes to see what he sees. Praise God. So this anointing of the seer was extremely important. 
you know, for Ezekiel to receive as God was giving him a very special call and special gift as a seer. So for him to see the eyes and then in other trends, we're going to read where it says the eyes were all over the living beings. The living beings had eyes all over them. The wheels, uh, the rims of the wheels had eyes all over them, representing the all seeing eye of God. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah sees all and knows all and he's opening your eyes opening ezekiel's eyes to the understanding that and the purpose that god has given him as a seer as a prophetic seer prophetic priest and seer in his kingdom hallelujah to do his will and to do his purpose oh hallelujah he was already set up and geared up as a priest uh, to have his life set aside for the purpose of God. He was a priest. His father was a priest. He hadn't been ordained yet. But guess what? This was his ordination. <laughs> Praise God. The heavens opened up and God himself came down, okay, uh, uh, showed himself to Ezekiel to ordain him into the ministry and send him forth into the ministry and call that he had given him. God is calling you. He's saying, come up here. There's an impartation of a new grace and a new call and a new anointing. It is God himself that is showing up in all his glory, in all his power, and in every anointing that you need to see, okay? And when you see to be able to interpret that which God is showing you to give a message to a lost and dying world, <laughs> praise God. Hallelujah. This is absolutely awesome. And, and as we see, and you don't want to jump too far ahead, but in Ezekiel's life, he was a watchman. He was a priest in his ear. But do you know what? God sent him to a stiff-necked people. He sent him to a rebellious people. And he had, Ezekiel had to find out, hey, I'm, God has called me to this and given me this anointing, this great anointing and grace and this great start and this great call. But he also revealed to him that they're not going to listen to you. When I give you the word, they are not going to listen to you. They're not going to hear what you have to say. Do you know that one of the first assignments that I got as a, as a, to give a word to a leader, praise God, I'm just a brand new baby Christian. And God sent me on a missionary trip with some other well, uh, you know, well, uh, you know, matured Christians. But he gave me a word for a man of God. He told me he was going to give me a word uh, to give it to him. Praise God. But he's not going to receive it. So here it is. The precedent is set up here in Ezekiel. There are times when God is going to give you a word to give to someone. And God knows already ahead of time that the person is not going to receive it. Praise God. And so this is what happened with Ezekiel. And as you go, as you read further in Ezekiel, praise God. So this is a vision that he's having of the divine glory of God, a vision uh, that God has given him and uh, to set him off in the call that he has sent him in. And it is glorious. It is like nothing, not only that Ezekiel had ever seen to that time. I don't know too many other people that have had this kind of vision. We have a lot of visions. Praise God, and he's going to be sending forth even more with understanding and direction and uh, with uh, strategies on the visions that he's given you. So as we see, he wasn't given uh, Ezekiel this vision for nothing. It was, you know, it was for a purpose. God had to give him a great anointing, a great glory, a kavod anointing to do what he had called him to do with the people who were in exile, who, who were conquered, and who didn't believe God anymore. Praise God. And so the vision of the divine glory now stretched over the heads of the living being. There was something like an expanse, a great expanse that looked like a terrible and awesome shimmer of icy crystal. Can you imagine icy crystal? OK, now they're they're stretched out, their wings touching each other, you know, northeast, south and west. And then above them was this expanse. Okay, right above them, right above these living creatures and the wheels on their side. Now you got the picture of the wheels on the side of them, the living creatures with their wings, two of the wings covering their bodies, but the other wings stretched out and they're touching each other. Praise God. And there was a great expanse like icy crystal above uh, the living creatures. And it was over their head. And whenever they stopped, they lowered their wings. Now, above the expanse, this is the anointing and grace that we are talking about now. Above the expanse that was over their heads was something resembling a throne. And it appeared like as it was made of sapphire. Sapphire and lapis, lapis lazuli. We know the sapphire and lapis is blue. So it was like a throne. It was blue, okay? 
praise God, and seated on that which looked like a throne high up was a figure with the appearance of a man. Ezekiel is seeing God, God on his throne. Now upward from that which appeared to be his waist, he said, I saw something glowing that looked like it was filled with fire all around it. And downward from that which appeared to be his waist, I saw something like fire. And there was a brightness and a remarkable radiance like a halo all around it. Now remember now, the, the storm that he saw that opened everything up, the lightnings and the flashings, praise God, that brought a light in itself. Now here we go with another light that's even brighter than that. And this is the brightness of the light that was haloing this um, figure that was on the throne all around him. And as the appearance of the rainbow in the clouds on a rainy day, so was the appearance of the surrounding radiance. And this was the appearance of the likeness of the glory and the brilliance of the Lord. And when I saw it, I fell face downward and I heard a voice of one speaking. Praise God. Hallelujah. So here we have the heavens opening up to Ezekiel. And when he saw God on his throne, that's when he fell to his face. And when he fell on his face, either, you know, uh, awake or not awake, in a trance or however it was manifesting to him, he fell on his face, but he heard the voice of one speaking to him. All right, so let's go on to the next place in this. Praise God. And remember now, as you are, we are reading this together today, as we're going over this together, and as God gives us insight and understanding into this, God is releasing um, an anointing to you, okay? He's releasing an impartation to you of his presence. Oh, hallelujah. Because God has sent out a clarion call for the seers to come forth like never before. He's saying, come up here. There's an impartation that's going forth. And here we're going to talk about in chapter 2, Ezekiel's call, the prophet's call. Praise God. And we know when we talk about call, we're not talking about call on the phone. We're not talking about call on messenger. We're talking about a call from God himself. Remember, he's laying prostrate when he saw the vision of God uh, on the expanse above the living creatures on the throne. Um, he fell to his face and then he heard the voice. And this is what the voice said to him, son of man, stand on your feet and I will speak to you. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, man of God. Oh, woman of God. Oh, seer of God. Stand up in your place that God has assigned you to. Stand up in the glory of God. Stand up in your confidence. Stand up in your boldness. Stand up in the fact that you are called, anointed, and appointed of God. And that he is the one that is sending you forth with this great message, with this great anointing. Stand up. Hallelujah. Stand up. Take a stand for the word of God. Stay, take a stand for the place that God has sent you. Because it is only God that can call you to this place. Only God. And he is calling you. He's already put out a clarion call. You know, for you to come up here, you've already been called into ministry, but there's another level. There's another grace. There's another uh, call. No, before the exile, Ezekiel was probably preparing his whole life to be a priest. His father was a priest. Okay. He hadn't been ordained yet, but he was assigned to be a priest five years into captivity in the 30th year when he more than likely would have been ordained to be a priest. This is his ordination process from God himself. Praise God. Hallelujah. Your call is of God. Your call is from God. Praise God. And of course, he will assign men to lay hands on you to send you forth. The impartation is extremely important for men and women of God to recognize that call that's on you. But we want you now to receive another anointing, a great, another grace. And when I say we, me, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, and as he has appointed it to me, whoa, there it goes. He's called you to receive another level of anointing now. As you uh, look at Ezekiel, as you study uh, this presence of God that appeared to him in a vision, okay, in, in an open vision, an open heaven, but it looks like it was way even more than a vision because he had interaction. God was interacting with him. God opened the heavens himself. It was a divine sovereign appointment for Ezekiel. God initiating it. God showing him himself. 
God showing off to Ezekiel. Hey, look, look, this is who I am. This is where I am. Praise God. Chapter 2. And when he said to me, Son of man, stand on your feet, and I will speak to you. Then as he spoke to me, the Spirit entered me and sat me on my feet. Praise God. Hallelujah. He's telling him to stand on his feet. But when he spoke to him, it was the Spirit of God that actually lifted him up and stood him on his feet. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. It is the Spirit of God that's giving you the wherewithal, that's knitting on the inside of you the power and the authority that he's given you to stand up in the place and in the call that he's assigned you to. You are not standing alone. You are God it has, has caused you to stand there and let this assignment uh, from God to Ezekiel, you know, be a vision for you, a picture for you of God. He's, when, when Ezekiel saw God, he fell to his feet. But when he fell to his feet, the spirit of the Lord stood him right back up again. Okay, there's honor in the call of God. Yes, you are a humble man of God and you want to bow before God. Yes, of course you want to do that. But in your bowing, now God is saying, yes, you are humble, but I am the one that's standing you up. I'm the one that's putting you in this place. It is my glory. It is my power. It is my initiative saying, God, this is my thing. This is my plan for you. I've called you into this great work and I am leading you and I am guiding you. So here we go. As God spoke to him, he says, stand up on your feet. And as God spoke, the spirit stood him up. And this is what he said. And he said, I heard him. The spirit entered me, he said, and sat me up on my feet. The spirit of God went on the inside of him and sat him up, stood him up, set me up, he said, on my feet. And I heard him speaking to me. And he said to me, I am sending you, son of man, to the children of Israel. Oh, hallelujah. What a great call to a rebellious people in both the north and the south. They have rebelled against me. They and their fathers have sinned and revolted against me to this very day. And I'm sending you to them who are a stubborn and obstinate children. And you shall say to them, thus says the Lord God. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, bless his holy name. Oh, that is powerful. <laughs> I just feel the fire of God. I feel the glory of God. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. He opens the heavens and, he's, and then he stands him on his feet. The spirit goes in him He's hearing a voice outside of him. The spirit goes in him. He sees the vision, you know, out there. I mean, it's just all kinds of level of glory and anointing that's going on all at the same time. And then God speaks to him and he tells him, I'm sending you. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Do you know that you are sent of God, prophet of God? Do you know that your call is from God? Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. He wants you to be established in that knowledge that you are sent of God. Not just as a cliche. This is, this is the real deal. This is God himself. Nobody can call you but God. You know, he has an assignment for you. He has a purpose for you. He has a place for you to do what he's called you to do. And now in this prophet's call, in this seer's call, okay, God is telling him, look, uh, I'm sending you to a people who are rebellious. They're not going to hear you. They're not going to listen to you. They're rebellious against me. But this is where I have assigned you. This is where I've sent you. And, and we don't hear Ezekiel complaining about it at all. You hear what I'm saying? Oh, wow. Wherever God is sending you, whatever he has prepared you for, whatever your call is, it is his call. It is his assignment. Hallelujah. It is God himself of anointing and appointing you to the grace and the authority that he's given you. And we want you to capture a vision of God, the vision of his glory, the vision of his presence with you in whatever you do, wherever you go whatever assignment that you have to be stabilized, you know, in the fact that the spirit of God is in you for this call. <laughs> oh, hallelujah.
Hallelujah. When you recognize God in you, the purpose of the call, you're not going to have that wishy-washiness. You're not going to be confused and upset. You know, because you know that you know that you know that this is the step, this is the place, this is the assignment that God has given me. And I know that if he's given it to me, I, I will carry it out. His spirit is in me, leading me and guiding me. His spirit is in front of me, leading me and guiding me. Praise God to do what it is that he's called me to do. All I got to do is just be obedient. And as you read the, the book of Ezekiel and go through this whole thing, oh, it, it, it's just astounding. It's amazing, you know, the things that he told Ezekiel to do. And Ezekiel just, okay, <laughs> okay, God, this is what you want me to do. Okay. I mean, some really outrageous stuff, what we would consider outrageous. You know, you think it was, a, was something for Isaiah to sit around a long time naked, you know, laying on his side. Well, Ezekiel had some of that stuff going on too, more than Isaiah. Oh, wow. He would act out stuff. He would act out parables. He couldn't talk. God struck Ezekiel dumb. And Ezekiel could not talk until the Holy Spirit put words in his mouth of what to say. Okay, now this is very significant of the anointing of the seer and anointing of the prophet. It is a very highly symbolic uh, 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 that you want to look at Ezekiel being struck dumb. And not being able to say anything, you know, I think that's in chapter 2 or 3. Not being able to say anything, oh, hallelujah, let me just get over here since I'm, I'm mentioning it. Praise God. Chapter 3, verse 26, when he was struck dumb, all right, how would you like it if you couldn't say anything but what God gave you to say? There was nothing else for you to say except for the power of God, the word of God, the prophetic word of God coming out of your mouth. When we on assignment for God as prophets of God, we got to understand that when we speak, we speak for God. And we don't want to say, Jesus said, look, I don't say anything. <laughs> I say what I hear the Father say, okay, and I do what I see him do. And we see an example of this was with Ezekiel to, to the degree that the example was that he couldn't say anything but what God gave him to say because he was dumb. He couldn't talk. Any other time, except for when God put words in his mouth to speak. This is powerful. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And it is an example for us to understand that as we are speaking for God, as we go for speaking for God, we can't be putting, saying any old kind of raggedy thing out of our mouth. You know what I'm saying? And just saying it any old kind of way. You know, any old kind of way we want to say it. And Jesus didn't do it. He's our model. He says, I say what I hear the Father say. And I do what I see him do. And so in this anointing and grace that God has given uh, Ezekiel, I don't, I don't even know how to call it. An anointing is way far greater than an anointing. Okay? Way far away. It's, when we call it an anointing, it's almost like we're doing it a disservice. It's way greater than anointing. It's the presence, the very God himself with you. That's not an anointing. That's God with you. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. The anointing, I guess you have, is the, the power of God that gives you to do what he's called you to do. But when you got God with you, God backing you, God on the side of you, God on the inside of you, that's way greater than an anointing. It's God himself in this vision calling Ezekiel, you know, into his ministry. Praise God. The call of the prophet. God is calling you, man and woman of God, seer of God, to a new place in him, to a new assignment, to a new glory, to a new place. Be ready, get ready, and that's what this is all about. You're receiving an impartation today for the new call of God. That's what he said. They told me to tell you that prophetically. He's calling you, hallelujah, to come up here. I know you've been doing everything. Yeah, I know you've been watching the Prophets Teaching Group. You've been listening to tapes. You've been praying, and, you know, listening to CDs, getting all the glory and all the knowledge you can, praying like you've never prayed before, interceding. Praise God, the anointing of God, the, the Spirit of God has been stirring up in you, stirring up in you. Praise God, and God is sending you out like a rocket. Do you hear what I'm saying? Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. And here we have a precedent, you know, of a man who was being trained to be a priest, who was a priest, his father was a priest, and here God is giving him this most holy call, uh, God with him. God with him in a very special way. Praise God. Now listen to this. This is very important. And, and we're just going to cover chapter 2 today. And, and, and I want to let you know that uh, there are a lot of times when, you know, when I couldn't get any men or women to listen to me. So I made Ezekiel my friend and Isaiah was my friend. And, 
you know, Jeremiah was my friend, so I would read them and, and find myself in, in, in these words, you know. And so let me just go on to read chapter 2 to you. He says in, chapter, in verse 3, I'm sending you, son of man, to the children of Israel, to a rebellious people in both the north and the south, and they've rebelled against me. They and their fathers have sinned and revolted against me to this very day. And I'm sending you to them who are stubborn and obstinate children, and you will say to them, Thus saith the Lord God. Oh, hallelujah. Love it, love it, love it. <laughs> love it. You're going to say to them, no matter whether they're, they receive it or not, you're going to say, Thus saith the Lord God. And as for them, whether they listen, verse 5, and as for them, whether they listen or refuse to listen, for they are a rebellious house, yet they will know and be fully aware of the fact that there has been a prophet among them. <laughs> Hallelujah. Whether they receive the word that God sends you with or whether they forbear, whether they receive it, they're going to know <laughs> that a prophet of God has been in their midst. Why? Because God is with the prophet. Okay, his glory is with the prophet. His kavod heavy glory is with the prophet, with the man of God, with the power and the authority that he's given you and that he's sending in this time. He's calling you up to get this glory. He's calling you up to get this new anointing. He's calling you up to get this new grace. He's calling you up in another assignment with him in his presence. He's opening up the heavens in another way now for you to step into that place where people are going to know, hallelujah, not only you know, in the church world, but in the world itself, they're going to know that a prophet has been among them, whether they receive it or whether they don't receive it. Okay, and here's what he tells them. And you, verse 6, son of man, neither fear them nor fear their words. Okay, though briars and thorns are all around you and you sit among scorpions, neither fear their words nor be dismayed at their presence. For they are a rebellious house, but you speak my words to them, whether they will listen or refuse to listen, for they are most rebellious. Listen to what God is saying here. Listen to the confidence that he's building up in you as a prophet and as a seer. Praise God. You're going to trust the words that God puts in your mouth and whoever he sends you to, to give that word. Uh, you know, there are times when your words haven't been received. Praise God. But God is bringing you to another level now so that whether they're received or not, it's not going to bother you. It's not going to shake you because you are going to know that you know that you know that the words that are coming out of your mouth are coming from God. And so because they're coming from God, you don't have to second guess them. You don't have to, you know, uh, be all upset when people don't receive you. OK, that's the least of it, being upset because people aren't receiving what you're saying. Praise God. Here we have Ezekiel. God's told him, look, I'm sending you and they're not going to receive what you say, but I'm sending you anyway and they're going to know that a prophet has been in their midst. Okay, and so here we want to encourage you that the visions that God has given you as a seer, the dreams uh, that he's given you, there's an interpretation for each and every one of them. There's an assignment on them, but just because there's an interpretation, an assignment on them, doesn't mean that every time you open your mouth in the message that God gives you, based on the visions that he's given you, that everyone's going to receive them. Look at here. God came to this man. God showed up to him. God showed him himself and his glory. He had a vision of God, okay? And with that grace that he had on him to go forth in God, they still didn't hear him. They saw God. How can you have an encounter with God like that and not be shining in his glory, just like Moses? Okay, just like Moses, shining in the glory of God, so much so that the people didn't want to look on his face. Can you imagine how Ezekiel looked after that kind of experience with God? And now he's being sent to a rebellious people. God is all over him, in him, and with him, and the people still won't receive what he's saying. They won't receive that it's God. Oh, wow. <laughs> That is really something, but I'm going to tell you, not all of you are going to have, not all of you are going to have that assignment to go to a stiff-necked people, to a rebellious people. Some of you are going to go to people, you know, that are going to receive what you, what you have to say, but you need to be prepared whether they receive or whether they don't receive, whether they accept you or whether they don't accept you. It's still the word of God. It's still God with you. It's still God's call. 
Okay, don't you dare, you know, let men and jealousy and envy put you down because of the grace that God is, is on, has on you. It says here that they're going to know a prophet is in their midst. That's the kind of anointing that you are going to have. You're not even going to have to open your mouth. They're going to know a prophet is in their midst. You hear what I'm saying? Because of this kind of anointing that God is calling you to, calling you up here to this kind of anointing with him, this kind of, uh, of, of, of uh, relationship with God. He's calling you into another kind of relationship with him. Praise God. And, you know, when we talk about obedience, you know, obedience is not even a question for Ezekiel. It's just what God gave him to do is just so much a part of him till it was him. And that's what that glory represented when, you know, when he sees this vision. God in the vision is not just coming, you know, to show him something to say, oh, look, you know, so he can say, oh, God gave me a vision. No, he's creating in him a desire to be all that God has assigned him to be. OK, that's what God is doing with these visions. The visions are awesome and they're great, but he's left. God has left the residue of his character in Ezekiel and in you. You have God's character. You know, when you have these visions, it's coming with all kinds of power of God. Hallelujah. To create in you that clean heart, that new mind, that refreshed anointing so that you do carry his power wherever you go. All right. And so. Um, praise God. So let me just let me just read on here for you. Yeah, I finished. I finished chapter two for you. OK, so let me see. I got a minute. Let me see if I can go on to chapter three for you. See, there was, there was a scripture in chapter 3, and, and I think it, it's important. And it's important as we try to understand what we have to say, okay? And, and just a little bit more about the history. He was preaching all this, doing all this about 592 B.C., about, you know, 600 years before Christ, okay? Praise God. And he was a contemporary of Daniel. He was a contemporary of Jeremiah and Daniel, and even wrote about Daniel. Uh, you hear him mention Daniel in, in a few of the chapters uh, here in Ezekiel. And so we have this priest with this tremendous anointing uh, from God, uh, with this visitation that he had from God himself. And Ezekiel's commission, let's read about his commission. Now he's called, he got the vision, in the vision he's called, God shows up to him and talks to him. Okay, he sees God on the throne, okay? And God's talking to him, telling him he's sending him forth. Now, this is the commission, okay? And he said to me, Son of man, eat what you find in this book and eat this scroll and then go and speak to the house of Israel. So God is calling you to go and speak to the house of Israel, but you got to eat the word first. You got to know the word before you go and speak. Praise God. And so the purpose of you knowing the word is for God using your voice so that you can speak the things that he's given you. Not what you think. Okay, God is saying, but what God is actually saying. So I opened my mouth, he said, and he fed me the scroll. And he said to me, son of man, eat this scroll that I am giving you and fill your stomach with it. So I ate it and it was sweet as honey to my mouth. Remember, we talked about in visions uh, how God will use your senses, your, your natural. You have five spiritual senses and five natural senses. Well, God gave him the scroll to eat. It's a spiritual scroll that God was giving him, actually the word of God, but it tasted sweet. So that's his spiritual taste going on, his spiritual senses of taste going on. Hallelujah. As God has opened his spiritual eyes to see into the heavenly realm, okay, to see this vision of God himself, God had to open his eyes so he could see it and to bring him this same anointing of visions and being able to see because that vision had eyes all around it. The beings had eyes. The wheels had eyes. And then atop that, that whole glorious, the four cherubims that he saw was, the, was a great expanse and platform that held the, the throne of God himself. Hallelujah. And so God opened your spiritual eyes. He opened his spiritual sense of taste, his spiritual sense of hearing because he heard the voice of God. And so we have all of these manifestations of how God comes to you in a vision. He will speak to you. He will open your eyes and he will even in this particular case gave Ezekiel a sense of taste. OK, while well, he's eating, he's eating the word of God. He's eating it uh, in the natural, but it's a spiritual thing that's going on as well. Praise God that as you eat the word of God, you will speak what thus saith the Lord. And this is why you know I promote you knowing the word of God, studying the word of God, hearing the word of God every day. You know, we have a testimony of uh, 
uh, one uh, uh, general in the Lord, he reads at least or listens to 50 chapters of the Bible a day. Uh, and he's got a tremendous anointing and grace and glory of God on him like never before. You know, as he goes around raising over 500 people from the dead and, you know, all kind of manifestations of healings and the glory of God manifesting, you know, in his ministry. And so he ate the scroll representing the word of God, representing the Logos, so that he could speak forth that which God is saying. So God could have a platform and anointing already set on the inside of him so that he could move forth on that basis. And he said to me, son of man, God's still talking. Go to the house of Israel and speak my words to them. For you are not being sent to a people of unintelligible speech or difficult language, but to the house of Israel. Look, listen to this. He said, you're not sending, I'm not sending you to people who are dumb. I'm not sending you to people who are, don't have the same language as you. Okay, they don't have a difficult language, uh, unintelligible speech. You know, you all understand the same language. You got the same language. I'm sending you to the house of Israel. You know, I'm sending you to your people. Okay, and so not to many peoples of unintelligible speech or difficult language whose words you cannot understand, but I've sent you to them who should listen to you and they should pay attention to my message. Yet the house of Israel will not be willing to listen to you and obey you since they are not willing to listen to me and obey me. For the entire house of Israel is stubborn and obstinate. And behold, I have made your face as hard as their faces and your forehead as hard as their foreheads. In other words, he says, set your face like flint. Okay, you, they're hard and in the natural, I mean, in the natural, well, I made you even harder, just as hard in the spirit realm. <laughs> glory, <laughs> hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Mm. Praise God. In other words, God has given him an anointing in the spirit realm to match that, that stubbornness that they have. Okay, so don't you worry about it. Don't you fret about it. Don't you fret about folks who don't receive you. Your call is of God. Hallelujah. You've been assigned by God. Oh, this is so powerful. I feel the fire of God. I feel the anointing and impartation just going forth, you know, giving you that confidence and stability, knowing that your call is of God in the same way that Ezekiel was called as a prophet. He was a prophet, priest, and a seer. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Behold, I made your face as hard as theirs. <laughs> So they think they got some power. <laughs> they think they got some attitude. You know what I'm saying? Nah, your attitude in the spirit is way more powerful than the attitude that they got, okay? And so you just stand. And I've made your forehead like diamond, okay? You know, diamond is the hardest rock. Emery called, was called in the Bible. But he said, I've set your face like flint. I've made you, hallelujah, your face and the anointing and grace that I've given you as hard as a diamond, hard as substance, okay, hard as stone. Harder than flint, he said. So don't be afraid of them or be dismayed before them, though they are a rebellious house. Listen, we rebuke fear. Remember the angel would come and tap Joshua on the shoulder saying, only be thou strong and of good courage. You know, don't be afraid for the Lord thy God is with you. Okay, we have the angel telling Joshua that in, in the book of Joshua. And here we have God telling Ezekiel that. <laughs> God himself. Oh, hallelujah. Say, look, you know, don't, I set you so strong. I set you so powerful. Ain't nothing going to touch you. Can't touch that. Can't touch this anointing I've given you. Ain't nothing can touch it. Okay. They're going to be mean to you. They're going to be upset. Hallelujah. And they think they got it. They think they got it like that. But let me tell you, I gave you something to match them in what they think they have in the natural. I gave you something that matches in the spirit realm in the power and authority. So don't be afraid, okay, of their faces. Don't be afraid of their attitudes. Don't be afraid of what men are going to say about you and to you. Don't be afraid they're going to trip you up and not give you a chance and not give you an opportunity. Don't be afraid of them, okay? And so what we're talking about is not being afraid of men as well, you know, is, is don't, you know, don't be afraid uh, in the sense that, you know, you're everything, you know, you make, you know, these leaders and everything, you're everything. Understand what I'm trying to say. They're great leaders. God has assigned great leaders, you know, into the body of Christ. Uh, but sometimes some leaders, you know, can be false prophets and teaching a false thing, teaching from their flesh, 
and we love all of them because they're assigned by God and, and, and they have been put in the place that God has assigned them to be in. But praise God, you, you know, as a prophetic seer of the Lord, must understand that God has placed you as well, okay, that you have a place as well. Praise God. And, and not to be afraid of the demonic forces that are going to operate through them, you know, stubbornness and envy and jealousy. You're going to see all of that. You're going to see all kind of demons come out of the woodwork when you get ready to stand up in the anointing and call that God has given you. When you get ready to stand up, all hell is going to break loose against you because they want to, hell wants to keep you down and keep you back from this kind of confidence. Wants to keep you down and keep you back from this kind of boldness. He doesn't want you to know that God has set your face like flint, like a diamond, okay, to, to cut through the demonic forces that have been set in your way, okay? So, uh, don't be afraid, you know, it's not just men. Yes, don't be afraid of men, but it's the demonic forces that are going to perpetrate through the men, okay? It's the principalities that you got to fight over the nations and over the areas. So, yes, it, it's, it's not to be afraid of men, but you got some heavy demons that God is going to have you dealing with, rulers of darkness, principalities, and the people don't even know that it's the rulers of darkness and the principalities that are moving them. They think they're cool. They think they are right. But God is going to show you through visions and through understandings what the true heart of men is and the true demons that are behind what they're doing and what they're saying. And God is going to give you the authority over that. He's already set your face like Flint to go in there and not to be upset and not to be mad, but to be glad in the anointing and the grace that God is giving you to cut through and break down that stuff, to break down the territory of Jesus, to break down the territory of the enemy. Because this is the purpose that the Son of God was manifested. The Son of God was manifested to destroy the works of the evil one. Not to agree with them. Not to pet them. Not to cajole them. Not to hang out with them. Okay? He was sent to destroy the works. And so in the wisdom that God is going to give you in this prophetic seer anointing, he's going to show you stuff. But he's going to give you wisdom on what to do with what he's showing you. Praise God. Hallelujah. But... While you're going in, before you go in, you're going to have to understand. You're going to have to eat the word of God. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Recognize that God is in you and who's with you. Praise God. And as you go forth in the word of God, not to be afraid, not to let any slight of man deter you from what God has given you to say and what God has given you to do. Praise God. And we're not coming against man, even though it, 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 God is letting him know that they're rebellious. Do you know rebellion is a spirit, is a demon? Okay, so you got to fight the principalities in, in the territory that God has given you. This is not a battle against man. I want you to understand that. You are battling not flesh and blood. And God wants to bring you to a higher level so you can see what is truly manifesting uh, through men so that you can destroy that work, the work of the evil one. Hallelujah. And so we're just thanking God for this anointing and for this grace. Hallelujah. We don't want to be mad at men. We want to be mad at the devil. Hallelujah. Right? And take him out. God is setting your face like flint. And as we look at what Ezekiel had to do, understand that the people that he was fighting, they, you know, their principalities operating through those folks. They didn't want to hear because the devil had their eyes blocked. But God opened Ezekiel's eyes, gave him the eyes to see. And God is opening your eyes and giving you eyes to see, to see what's going on. And then he's going to give you a solution to what's going on. But he can't give you solutions unless you see stuff when you're scared. Okay? You're scared to confront. You're scared to say anything. Okay? You're scared of this anointing, hiding back in the corner somewhere, you know, thinking, you know, you're not worthy. Okay, yeah, you're worthy, all right. Was Ezekiel worthy? Not in and of himself, but God made him worthy because God put the words in his mouth, okay? Praise God. Son of man, receive into your heart all my words which I will speak to you and hear with your ears. Okay, here we go. Spiritual ears. Spiritual eyes, spiritual taste, oh, hallelujah. Glory to God, hallelujah. Son of man, I say it again, moreover, he said to me, son of man, verse 10, chapter 3, receive into your heart all my words, which I will speak to you and hear with your ears. Listen closely, listen closely, listen closely. We've been talking about listening closely, paying attention to the nudges and the hunches and the spiritual impressions that God has given you. That's where you're listening, you know, paying attention to what God is saying. Very important in this anointing because God is going to be speaking, but he's going to be speaking sometimes in audible words. Sometimes, you know, you're going to see stuff. You're going to hear stuff. You're going to taste stuff. All of this is the speech of God, the spiritual speech of God and the way he speaks to us. Okay. 
Son of man, receive into your heart all my words, which I will speak to you and hear with your ears. Listen closely. Go to the Jewish exiles in Babylon, to the children of your people, and speak to them, whether they will listen or not, and tell them, thus saith the Lord. And then he says in verse 12, Then the Spirit lifted me up, and I heard a great rushing sound behind me. Blessed be the glory of the Lord in this place, above the expanse. Remember the, the four living creatures, the cherubim, and then there was a great expanse, and then above the expanse was the throne with God on the throne. He saw it all. He saw God. He had a vision of God. And he's saying, blessed be this place. Blessed be God. And God was above the expanse. And when I heard the sound of the wings of the living beings as they touched one another, and I heard the sound of the wheels beside them, a great rushing sign, so the Spirit lifted me up and took me away, and I went embittered by the sins of Israel in the rage of my spirit, and the hand of the Lord was strong upon me. Okay, there you go. Hallelujah. The Spirit lifted him up. Hallelujah. He was raging in his spirit. Okay, he didn't say he was raging in his flesh, but in his spirit. His spirit was raging with the glory of God. Hallelujah. At the indignation of Israel, at the rebellion of Israel. He had a burden for Israel, raging in his spirit. And so God was able to minister through to Israel through that rage that he put in the spirit, you know, of, um, of Ezekiel. That, uh, what do you call that, that um, when you call righteousness? Righteous indignation. Yeah, the righteous indignation that God put in his spirit against the sins of Israel. And the hand of the Lord, he said, was strong. <laughs> the hand of the Lord was strong on me. Praise God. Hallelujah. And listen, then he said, after that, after that anointing and grace, he came. He came and was sat astonished by the river for seven days. He couldn't say a word, okay? And then at, at the end of seven days, God struck him dumb. He couldn't say a word. And at the end of the seven days, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, I have pointed you as a watchman. To the house of Israel. Whenever you hear a word from my mouth, warn them from me. And when I say to the wicked, you shall certainly die, and you do not warn him or speak out to tell him to turn from his wicked way to save his life, that same evil man will die in his sin, but you will be responsible for his blood. However, if you warn the wicked, and he does not turn from his wickedness or from his wicked way, he will die in his sin, but you have freed yourself from the responsibility. Hallelujah. And again, when a righteous man turns from his righteousness, right standing with God, and sins, and I place on an obstacle before him, and he'll die. Since you have not warned him, he will die in his sin, and the righteous deeds which he have done will not be remembered. Oh, wow. But you will be responsible for his blood. However, if you have warned the righteous man not to sin, and he does not sin, he will surely live, because he took warning. Also, you have freed yourself. From responsibility and the hand of the Lord was on me there and he said to me arise and go out to the plain and I will speak to you so I got up and I went out in the plain and be behold the glory and the brilliance of the brilliance of the Lord was standing there like the glory I had seen another time God showed up he showed up once and then seven days later he showed up again <laughs> hallelujah hallelujah I know that many of you you know, have had visions of Jesus and Jesus appeared to you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Isn't that awesome where he showed up once, he showed up twice, and he kept on coming. God doesn't stop. He keeps on coming. Praise God. And that's all, you know, and he, the, the spirit entered his feet and he made me stand on my feet. And he spoke to me and said to me, go, shut yourself up in your house. And there's another direction, uh, an assignment that God had given him. Praise God. Now his ministry begins. From that glory anointing that he saw of God, from the, the vision that he had of God, he was struck dumb for seven days. Okay, struck dumb for seven days. Struck dumb for seven days, okay? Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And he couldn't talk until God gave him the license to talk. All right, so... I'm just really excited about this word as God is calling us and I'm excited about Ezekiel and you know even though God may not be calling you in the exact kind of call that God gave Ezekiel, praise God, he wants you to understand the kinds of uh, graces that he has and the way he has shown up to his seers, the way he's shown up to his prophets, you know, sending them out, calling them forth, giving <coughs> his hand, having his hand with them and he wants you to know that as you have been assigned by him, his hand is with you as well. 
okay? His hand is with you. The hand of God is with you. The power of God is with you. He got this kavod glory. That's the heavy glory. That glory that he saw, okay, was the same glory that was supposed to be resting over the ark, you know, in the tabernacle. And it's like, what are you, is God show, doing showing up in that same kind of glory in Babylon, okay? Well, we're going to learn further as we go into Ezekiel more that, that God had left his place, you know, uh, in the tabernacle in Jerusalem there because the, of the rebelliousness of the people. So God left, okay, his glory left. Hallelujah. And so what God is going to use you to do is to bring his glory back to where, you know, where he had left. He, he, uh, he even though he, he sent Ezekiel to a rebellious people, a rebellious house, and he said, he told them, look, they're not going to listen to you. Praise God. And then he judges them. He judges Israel. He judges the nations around them. Around them. But guess what? God returns his love to Israel and says, I'm going to put, you know, a, a new heart in you. Take that hard heart out of you, and I'm going to make it a heart of flesh. And then God strengthens Israel and blesses them, okay? The hope for Israel is in the back of the book of Ezekiel. Even though Ezekiel is a lot of judgment, you know, in, in the chapters, but also to this hope for Israel as well as we go through the entire book as God assigned Ezekiel. Now, we, I just want to let you know that when Ezekiel died, you know, we know Israel killed their prophets. Do you know he was drawn and quartered? That they were so rebellious, didn't want to listen to him. They put each one of his limbs on a horse and sent the horses off in different directions and just ripped his body apart. That's how Ezekiel actually died at the end of his life, okay? And so we're not saying that, you know, it's going to happen to you. That's not all what I'm saying. I just want you to know uh, the place that this man, that God had put him and the glory of presence of God that was with him and how rebellious the people were and what the enemy did to Ezekiel through the people, Okay? And so uh, we're not going to say that the road that you have uh, is, is, is what we call easy, but it is easy in God. Okay, if God is assigning you to do it, Ezekiel, you know, Ezekiel, uh, I'm not even going to say he had it rough because as I read him, it was, it was like a, a glory that he had that God put in him. When he saw that vision of God, you know, when you have that kind of vision of God, of God himself, there's something that happens to you. This, you know, there's an, uh, I, you know, I don't even have the words to say, you know, that there's something that happens to you that's so dynamic, okay? Ezekiel didn't have a rebellious bone in his body, okay? Everything that God told him to do, I mean, we don't read about some of the stuff that he had to do. And it's like, okay, God, okay, God, whatever, okay, whatever. That was, and, and that was because of that initial anointing that God has given you. My son, when he was seven years old, uh, was taken to heaven twice, and some more times since then, but at seven years old, he was taken to heaven twice, and there was something that happened to him in those experiences where God was anchored in him, that he never had any kind of issues like, you know, leaving God or going away from God. You know, even through his teen years, he made up his mind that he was going to serve God at all costs, and I believe it was because of that initial experience that God gave him at seven years old, taking him to heaven and having being in God's presence. And being in the presence of God, okay, your mind is set. You're, you're, you're set like flint. Your face is set like flint. Your intentions are set like diamonds, you know. Your, your uh, confidence is set, you know. And this is where God wants to take us. No more wobbly knees. No more wishy-washy. No more questioning, you know, is God with me or isn't he with me? But God has brought you to a place now where he's calling you to a place now, man. <laughs> oh, Hallelujah. Praise God. All I can say is just glory to God. Watch out for God. Receive this anointing today. Receive this glory today. Receive this impartation from, from Ezekiel. The same grace that God has sent to Ezekiel is with you as well. Praise God. And it's the same God. It's the same spirit. Praise God. And we're asking God to give you a vision of himself, a vision of his throne. Ezekiel had it, um, the same vision. Um, Isaiah had it, John the Baptist had it, and Jacob, had the, when he had the vision of the angels descending uh, and ascending from heaven, God was at the top of the ladder. He saw God. I see the Lord. I see the Lord. He is high and lifted up, and his train fills the temple. I see the Lord. And we want him to open your spiritual eyes so that you can see him. 
so that you can see him. Yes, and when you see the vision of God, the vision of his glory, the manifestation of the glory of God through the hand of God, hallelujah, touching down on earth for you. Good morning, everybody. Good morning for joining. Praise God that you will have that anchoring that Isaiah had, that Ezekiel had, that Jacob had, hallelujah, that John the Baptist had, praise God, that Peter had, that Paul had, hallelujah, anchored in God. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, man of God. We got to scoot on out of here. Um, oh, the hallelujah. apostle, give, give to you. <laughs> praise God. You want to put a seed on this word today? Uh, PayPal.me backslash profetina or call me at 602-702-6284. That's me, profetina. Praise God. Hallelujah. God has assigned us to have you uh, put a seed on the words that you are receiving. And whatever seed that you offer up, all the numbers in the seed add up to the number 10. It won't be 10. It won't be 100. But it will be like 109 or 100, 101 and then 8. I'll say 118. All three of those numbers add up to 10. And it is a prophetic anointing and grace that's going forth. A lot of people have seeded in to these messages on the seer and God is just blessing them tremendously and we want you to get in on the blessing too. Praise God. Remember there's an impartation that has gone forth unto you today. Uh, that's what God said he was doing and it's still going forth. Whoa, I'm still, still feeling the fire going through me. Another impartation just went out to you. Receive that. Oh, hallelujah. Put a seed on it. Put a seed on it. That adds up to the number 10. You could do 1,900 if you want. You can do 1,000 18. You can do 1,108. I mean, you know, you could do 73, 37, you know, 91, <laughs> 910. Praise God. Hallelujah. And so uh, we want you to partake of the glory of God here in this. So I'm going to put my phone number here. No, nope, we don't have time to do it. I'll put it on later uh, after. We want, we want to move out of the way for Apostle Charmaine uh, uh, Denson to come on with you. We love you guys. Place the seed in this word and watch God expand you. Remember, uh, it is the glory of God. It's God himself, a vision of God. We're calling that you will have a vision of God himself. Moses, hallelujah. <laughs> so you feel the fire. Okay, it's going, yeah, it's there. Pray. Oh, there it is again. Wow. Oh, hallelujah. It's, it's rising. It came right up this time. Right. Oh, hallelujah. Right up through me and out to you. Fire. Fire be, oh, fire. <laughs> fire be upon you. Fire, God. Oh, hallelujah. And we want to respect the apostles' time now. Hallelujah. Praise God. And so we will see you guys tomorrow morning with more on the Ezekiel vision, praise God, of God himself. Hallelujah. Thank hallelujah. you. Amen. Praise God. Isn't it awesome to get a vision of God, to see his blessing on your life? Hallelujah. Seek God earnestly and he'll bless you. There's nothing like taking time out with God. Hallelujah. Music, baby. Mm -hmm. Praise the God. Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. God. Praise God. <laughs> Go with God today. Seek him earnestly and he'll let you find him. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Ooh, bless the name of the Lord. This is a, we felt that. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Get that one. We love you guys. <laughs>